Today, I'm back here at John Kufleitner's gallery of pristine, vintage, and classic cars. We're going to take a look at this stunning 1951 Chevy Styline Deluxe Bel Air. That's a really long name. But anyway, before we take the tour, let's look back at what Chevy offered in 1951. A bit of an overview, if you will. But before we do all that, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time checking this out, please subscribe if you dig the content. We do all kinds of classic cars here. The weirder, the better. Also, leave a comment in the comment section below. And while you're down there, comment what vehicles you'd like to see a review for, because I'd love to do that for you guys. I'd love to go out and review cars that you guys would love to see. To start this story, we must go back a few years to 1949, because the 51 Chevy is essentially the same body style, different grill, different lights in the back, but it's overall the same body shell and it was used from 1949 to 1952. Chevy offered 14 models in 51. Two body models were offered. Fleet Line was their beautiful fastback offering and the Style Line. The Fleet Line came in a four-door and two-door configurations. The Style Line came in two-door, four-door, four-door wagon, two-door convertible, and the Deluxe Bel Air, but we'll get to that. There was three trim levels on offer. The Special was at the bottom, followed by the Deluxe and then the Deluxe Bel Air. Pricing for the Deluxe Bel Air ranged from $1,741 to $2,206. Um, adjusted for inflation would be $18,998.06 and on the top end, $24,072.21, which is a lot of car for the money. Okay, let's get back to this Style Line Deluxe Bel Air. There is seating inside for six passengers. Six full size adults can fit in this car comfortably. Featured 11 inch drum brakes as well as front suspension stabilizers. Popular mechanics did a bit on this car, and at 50 miles per hour, they could average about 20 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. These cars can weigh anywhere in the neighborhood between 3,215 pounds to 3,225 pounds. The, it's riding on a 115-inch wheelbase. The overall length of the car is 197 and a half inches long. Nowhere is the Bel Air inscription on this car. You either know what it is or you don't. The difference between this and the special and the regular deluxe is the roof design. If you check out the roof design, it's totally different as well as the rear glass situation. Notice it's three pieces because at the time they didn't have a way of making a single piece of glass that big without it being compromised in any way. So it's three individual pieces of glass. I believe Harley Earl designed this car and it looks stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous at any angle. Just check out those back brake lights. They look amazing. This car is equipped with turn signals, which is really cool. All right, getting inside the 51 Chevy, just take a look around at how nice this interior is. This is 1951. I love the chrome accent trim on the top. It almost looks like a fake convertible top. Just check out the courtesy lights in the back. Okay, inside the deluxe, check this out. The door panel is made out of the same material as the seats. It's this very plush, thick, padded material. Nice armrest, door handle, window crank. Let's walk through this dashboard layout. There's two clusters that sit right behind the steering wheel. The cluster on the left has four gauges in it, fuel, amp, temperature, and oil pressure. To the right in the other cluster is the speedo with the odometer. Moving back to the steering wheel itself, just check out the crest that's inside the steering wheel for the horn button. It looks amazing. Just to the left of that is the turn signal lever. Moving back to the center sits a clock and it's beautiful the way it's positioned in the dashboard. Moving all the way to the right, just check out this glove box. It's all chrome plated on the dashboard. Very nice sized glove box. You can fit my camera, my iPad, all my video editing stuff inside there and lock it. I don't know of any other new car that you could stick all your stuff in the glove box and lock it, especially like the cameras. The camera stuff is pretty big. Here's an illustration of what the 51 Chevy dashboard looks like. I'm sorry, the footage didn't turn out as great as I wanted to, so I wanted a backup representation on the dashboard layout with description of all the buttons, switches, and knobs. Okay, I'm sitting in the back here. 
there isn't that much headroom uh, despite the roof being high because where the back seat is it's uh there isn't that much room there isn't that much room period like look at where my legs are i'm six foot two so if you're shorter there would be more leg room but there really isn't that much leg room back here despite this car being as big as it is ashtrays on both sides ashtray there windows so the window all the windows go down which will give it that hard top convertible look the door is still open so I can put this window down and these windows operate different than you would think look at how they go down it just kind of turns until it gets to that point and then it goes all the way down no pillar but just check out this uh, headliner situation I love the chrome accent bars it almost looks like a fake convertible top if you had a convertible top, that's kind of like what it would have these like ribs through here. But just check out the lighting situation. There's two really nice bright lights so you can see back here. There is no dome light. But you have two of these side lights, which are really nice. Notice the rear windshield back here. It is split. It's a three-piece rear windshield. This is one separate piece. This is another separate piece and there is a third separate piece and then there's a storage area back here that you could put stuff back here for whatever reason if you wanted to sun bake stuff you could put it right here just check out the chrome okay getting out of the back seat just push the seat forward see how that operates Okay, uh, putting the key in the key cylinder and opening up the lid to this trunk. There's lots of room in this trunk. Off to the right, there's a full-size spare. Notice it's a bias ply tire. I don't know if you guys have ever driven on bias plies, but there's nothing quite like driving on them. They, they kind of suck, especially in the rain. People just don't realize, you know, there's it's like driving on roller skates. People that choose to drive on bias ply tires are just like separating the men from the boys. Real men drive on bias ply tires because it, they're period correct tires and it's way harder to drive on them. That was just a joke, but it's a skill to master. Cars with bias ply tires handle totally different than radials. My truck has them and it's a dually. And no lie, I was coming out of a parking lot one day in the rain and I had to make a sharp turn and I was pulling onto traffic and as I turned and hit the gas, I drifted onto the road. You could literally go to an empty parking lot, turn the wheel all the way to the left or all the way to the right, and you'll just do 360s because there's no traction. It takes skill to drive on bias ply tires. Okay, so this one has two catches. There's one right here, which we've already released it. And then there's another one right inside here that you push. There's what the mechanism looks like. You have to physically so it's two it's two steps you hit this one first and then you have to push this to move it okay let's talk about the engines offered in 1951 these were carryover engines from 1950 i scoured the internet i couldn't find a 51 ad but these are the same engines the base engine or the standard engine was known as the thrift master it made 92 horsepower that was a 216 inline six had four main bearings it was made of a cast iron block 6.6 .6 to 1 compression ratio which wasn't that much but they didn't really make that much compression back then the optional engine was the 235 cubic inch displacement inline six made 105 horsepower compression ratio was 6.7 0.7 to 1 cast iron block four main bearings just like the other one it was named the load master or the blue flame six two transmissions were available if you got the 216 you had the three speed manual it was three on the tree if you got the optional three uh, 235 you had the two speed power glide automatic Okay, on to the pros and cons. I get all the pros and cons from this complete book of collectible cars that I got when I was a kid. I need an updated version, but... So if you have any disputes, take it up with them. The pros. Best looking, most interesting Chevy of these years. Very high quality for its class, which we saw in the interior. Available in the Power Glide Automatic. The cons. 
not much movement on the collector market. Like I said, this thing needs updated. I'm pretty sure that these are more collectible now than they were in the 2000s. And it says poor performance, especially with the Power Glide. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe, comment in the comment section. Leave a story. If you have a story pertaining to this car, tell it. I, I read every comment that anybody sends me. And I respond to any comment of substance. So hopefully I'll see you in the comment section below. Until next time, toodaloo!